volunteering lens of COVID-19. Uh, je, je suis très ravie d'être avec vous autres pour ce webinaire uh, optique de bénévolat au temps de, de pandémie. Uh, Aujourd'hui, on va avoir des présentations et tous les matériaux sont disponibles en anglais et français. After the webinar, we'll be uh, posting the PowerPoint presentations and links to the resources on our website. Welcome. I'm very happy to welcome you to this webinar and to be presenting with Statistics Canada. Uh, gratitude to Ipsos Public Affairs for doing some research along with Volunteer Canada and for Employment and Social Development Canada for supporting some of our efforts to uh, disseminate the um, general social survey on giving, volunteering and participating. While all of you are mute because of the large numbers and the great interest in this topic, you can ask your questions through the chat function. Vous pouvez poser les questions aux fonctions de chat, and we'll be answering the questions um, after each presentation, and there'll be um, opportunity at the end, of course, to explore this topic together. So, um, I'm going to be joined by my colleague, Deborah Pike, who's the manager of special projects and has been the manager of our COVID response. Um, and Patrick Fournier-Savard from Statistics Canada, who's the general social survey on giving, volunteering and participating manager, along with his colleagues. So we have um, great expertise and great information to share with you this morning. I'll begin with a little bit about Volunteer Canada. Our vision is involved Canadians, resilient communities, and a vibrant Canada. And we will hear today about how far we are getting, and I'm feeling optimistic that we're really uh, seeing our vision um, right before us, especially during these times. Our mission is to provide national leadership and expertise on volunteering to enhance the participation, quality, and diversity of volunteer experiences to build a strong and connected communities. And we work in collaboration with more than 200 local volunteer centers, provincial and territorial associations who provide leadership and expertise on volunteering in their respective jurisdictions. So, um, with that, again, uh, to let you know, um, um, people are muted because of the large numbers, but you can ask questions um, in the chat function. Vous pouvez poser des questions au fonction chat, and we will do our best um, during this webinar and afterwards to answer your questions. So now for the main event, we are really pleased to introduce Patrick uh, Fournier-Savard from Statistics Canada. Um, to uh, review for us some really um, pertinent information from the General Social Survey on giving, volunteering, and participating. Over to you, Patrick. Merci beaucoup, Paula. Um, bonjour à tous. Uh, Patrick Fournier-Savard, comme Paula uh, m'a présenté, uh, de Statistique Canada, uh, qui travaille sur l'enquête sur le don bénévolat et la participation avec euh, mes collègues aujourd'hui, euh, Valérie Duplessis et Tara Hanman, qui ont travaillé euh, sur cette publication. Uh, but before we start, I'd like to give a big thank you to Paula and uh, the Volunteer Canada team for organizing this event with sort, such sort, short notice. Um, I am amazed by the efficiency, uh, by the professionalism, uh, so, I tip my hat to you guys. Uh, before we start, uh, maybe a bit of context before we uh, dive in the article that is released today. Um, just a few weeks ago, uh, this release was not even on our radar, and you probably have a bit of um, idea as to why. Um, indeed, uh, we had announced for end of June, uh, the initial release of the GVP data. Uh, and with that release, uh, we had planned to release uh, the micro data file, uh, a series of online uh, interactive tables on the topic of volunteering and as well uh, as of charitable giving, um, and a booklet uh, offering uh, detailed and in-depth information about volunteering. Uh, but that was before COVID-19. Uh, 
Um, so our regular operation were significantly affected, as you can imagine. However, um, staff can adapted its priorities and resources in light of the present health crisis. And as you may have noticed, the agency has taken new measures to better inform the public and decision makers. And it's in this context that our initial dissemination plan had to be adjusted to incorporate today's short article published under the new analytical series at StatCan, which is called StatCan COVID-19, Data to Insight for a Better Canada. So the article that we are presenting today is based on pre-pandemic data, uh, but provides insight to challenges and opportunities uh, for volunteering in the current context and as an enormous value as baseline data moving forward with the next iteration of the survey. Now I think it's important to mention that with today's short article um, we are also releasing the uh, micro data file which is as we speak now, available through the research data centers through Canada. And the file is also available um, now at our service client, client service uh, at StatCan for custom um, tabulation. So this is now considered a public, um, public material. Um, so the initial full release, as I said, uh, inclu inclu uh, included a volunteering booklet and a series of online data table providing a larger scope and greater detailed information, uh, namely uh, an ex uh, uh, more detail on informal volunteering than in previous uh, iteration of the survey, and also um, a lot of um, uh, new information on the uh, international definition of um, volunteering as measured by uh, the International Labor Office. Um, so today's article, of course, doesn't dive into this larger topic, uh, but uh, is um, still deemed valuable. So I believe we have the screen of the um, and the links um, on screen, and we can now, I believe, dive in the uh, article, which is Volunteering in Canada, Challenges and Opportunities During the COVID Pandemic. Alors, in 2018, over 12.7 million Canadians volunteer for charities and nonprofit organizations. That represents uh, close to four Canadian out of 10, age 15 and older. And in terms of amount or volunteering hours, this represents 1.6 billion hours or an equivalent of full-time year-round job equivalent of 858,000 jobs. Now, if we can scroll down to table one, you will see these indicators varying by generation. We have the iGen, Millennials, Gen X, Baby Boomers, and Matures. And so did the impacts of the health measures and constraints during the pandemic. So whether it is by working from home, carrying caring for elderly parents or because of self-isolating, some volunteers may have less time or simply cannot dedicate their time like they used to. And to that effect, let's remember that matures and baby boomers who are volunteer were more likely to be top volunteer. So I'll just do a little parenthesis right now for to give you some um, some rates concerning the, the the proportion of top volunteers within each generation. So first of all, what is a top volunteer? 
it is the volunteers that have spent uh, 132 hours or more during the past 12 months. And that was, of course, back in 2018. So that's why we call them our top volunteers. And in the mature volunteer population, 40% of the mature were top volunteers. And that same percentage for baby boomers was 32%. And for iGen, this percentage was 19. So with these measures in place that have been, um, that, we, that, that we've learned about through medias, um, they are now themselves in need of support and may now be less, of course, available to contribute. Now, with schools having transition to online learning and cancellation of activities, some iGen may be in a position to contribute more to the community. 2018 data reveals for this generation, 82 average hours and a volunteer rate of 52%, which demonstrates an important connection and involvement in the sector. And maybe, of course, more available to contribute in the current context. So these figures concern the volunteering experience through organization or on behalf of organization. We refer to this type of volunteering as formal volunteering, usually. But Canadians are also acting directly to support those around them. And we refer to that type of volunteering as informal. And recent media reports have highlighted numerous individual initiatives, such as picking up or dropping groceries, sewing non-medical masks, offering emotional support via online social media platforms. And even new labels were created or popularized just recently, such as care monitoring. And this is what we call uh, informal volunteering. Table two, if we could see table two. In 2018, over 22, uh, 22 million Canadians volunteered informally, representing three quarters of the 15 plus population, which represents 3.4 billion hours, a volume of work representing 1.7 full-time year round jobs. So on table two, if we can see table two, on the screen, thank you. Again, here, these informal indicators vary by generations and are all higher than the one observed for formal volunteering. And this large unpaid informal workforce is an asset to the volunteering sector and the country in these unprecedented times. Now, the article also uh, addresses another uh, aspect of volunteering which is the organization types. The article provides a description of average hours by organization types that vol formal volunteers contributed to. Again, these indicators are pre-pandemic, but deemed useful as some volunteering sectors are likely more impacted than others by suspension of volunteering activities or capacity decrease. For example, cultural events or religious or sports gathering have been canceled. Hospital and social services quickly implemented protection measures to face increased demand. In other words, by the nature of the type of activities in these sectors, or that defines these sectors, volunteer causes have been impacted to various degrees. And what we know today with GVP 2018 data moving into the pandemic is that formal volunteers dedicated more than 100 hours on average to the arts and culture sector, sports and recreation, and religious organization and hospital. All of these benefiting from the most hours on, 
on average in 2018. So the article actually uh, addresses, as you were able, able to hear, a, a insight uh, with formal volunteering, informal volunteering, and organization types. And I would like to reiterate that even though GVP 2018 data are pre-pandemic, it is it can serve as baseline data and help better understand impacts moving forward. And as you can see today, some insight to different sectors and the public. So this would be in general what we can retain from the short article today on volunteering in Canada during the pandemic. Thank you. Back to you, Paula. Thank you, merci, Patrick. Um, so as you can see, um, this really provides us with valuable information, as Patrick said, it's baseline data for us to understand what was the state of volunteering before the pandemic and what does it tell us and help us understand what happened since then. Um, why don't we take a few minutes to, uh, to see if there are a few questions and then we'll move on to um, the, the next, um, the next uh, data from the Ipsos uh, Volunteer Canada survey that we did in collaboration with the Volunteer Management Professionals of Canada. Are there any questions for the moment? I'm sure there's lots of folks processing this valuable information, but I thought I would pause before we moved on. I'll remind folks to just um, type their questions into the chat function. If you have any questions right now for Patrick about the information he has just shared. So there's a question about how to get a copy of the article and um, we will include the link to our website, which the link on our website to that specific article on the Stats Can uh, site. Karen's gonna add that into the chat function so that everybody has it available. After the presentation, uh, you can go to our website and find it there as well. There's a question, Patrick, if um, the sorry, if there's going to be a breakdown of informal volunteering participation by sector. Um, <clears throat> if there would be such a thing, it would be part of the um, uh, upcoming release, which I talked about earlier, uh, coming this summer, probably August, still to be uh, defined, but uh, we're working on this uh, as we speak or just after this dissemination. Um, it is possible to uh, cross uh, formal volunteering uh, by sectors, um, which we here refer as, I, as ICNPO code, but it's basically your organization types. Um, it will not be possible to do that with informal because of the nature of informal volunteering. Uh, but we will be able to provide informal volunteering per its different and, and multiple dimensions. And if I, I can take just one minute to elaborate on what is informal volunteering within G the GVP survey. It's actually two dimensions. One that we call direct help. Uh, and this includes help given to friends, neighbors, relatives, but excludes helps given to a person living in one's household. And what are these activities that are included in informal? Well, they include health related or personal care support, teaching, coaching, help with paperwork, shopping, driving, cooking, cleaning, or maintenance related tasks, and also a category called other, if a, a, a participant deemed that it qualified as direct help. The second dimension of informal volunteering is the one labeled improving the community. So this is, is basically, again, anything that is done directly through activities that are not on behalf of a group or an organization, such as 
maintaining public space, participating in public meetings, producing or disseminating information, organizing, coordinating a group or an event, and helping to develop an economic or social project to their communities. So back to the question, what we are doing with the upcoming release is a distribution of informal volunteering in terms of participation also amounts in terms of hours for that portion of the informal volunteering. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. Um, there is just a clarification that I think would be useful at this time. Is all the 2018 information going to be available now or in August? It is available all now. And with, people will access all of the 2018 information on the link that we've posted to the StatsCan site. Well, uh, what what is uh, ready to 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 absorb as as a reader or as as someone interested in volunteering is the article, uh, which is as you observed quite short given the time and the context. Uh, what is available as we speak today is the access to the microdata file. So if someone is actually interested in, in, in uh, requesting, and I believe there are costs involved, but contacting our service client, client services to uh, order a tabulation, for example, of informal volunteering for such sector or, or uh, all of the content is actually available now with these tabulation. What will be available in August are the table, the series of tables that we are working on, which um, are a, a regular uh, type of series that we've published in the past that uh, touch on volunteering uh, and also on charitable giving with the booklet. So those tables will have the different breakdowns by sector and by different categories, yes, correct? Yes, uh, yes, exactly. And, and especially something that I believe uh, people are waiting for is a distribution of all these indicators by geography, by yes. province, etc. So that's what that will become available in August. Exactement. Excellent. Merci. All right, we'll have more time for other questions at the end, um, but we will move on to the to the other uh, report. Merci, Patrick, and your team. Um, as everyone is absorbing this, we can see that it's particularly interesting to hear about the different generations um, and their uh, volunteering patterns. It's particularly interesting to hear how over time, as with around the world, we're seeing an increase in um, monitoring and reporting on informal volunteering and recognizing it and I and and as many of us in the sector have been noticing especially during this time how do we honor it recognize it and also help to make it safer and and support it in in many ways so that, that that's uh, something that has been um, on everyone's mind over the last um, several months have we as we've really been in awe of the generosity of people helping each other out in all kinds of ways, both formally and informally. So on to uh, the next um, part of the presentation. Um, as you know, um, we, we at Volunteer Canada have been providing resources on uh, COVID-19 responses to help organizations with their volunteering um, programs, engagement around a variety of things, including safely volunteering, virtual volunteering, governance implications, uh, screening, and um, now, of course, turning to what do we do next as we start to re-engage and start to reopen. Um, and so, um, Deborah Pike uh, worked with um, Ipsos Public Affairs um, on this survey to get a better idea of, um, from organizations' point of view and from volunteers' point of view, what happened um, when we compare to what was going on before COVID and what has happened since then and what is likely to happen in the future. So the next few slides that I'll share and Deborah will share um, will highlight some of those results. And again, similar to uh, Statistics Canada, the fuller report will be ready um, later, uh, later on. We do have a webinar um, um, on July 7th uh, arranged to give more details, but here's some highlights. 
So to begin with, um, we looked, um, we worked with um, Ipsos Public Affairs and um, we uh, developed a survey. And um, when we talk about the perspective of volunteers, to, um, to describe what we're talking about, we're talking about people who were active volunteers before March. We're talking about people who were not active volunteer active volunteers before March, and then during the pandemic, who, who continued to be involved, who had to step away, if you weren't involved before, who began to volunteer, and who wasn't volunteering before and tried to volunteer during COVID and wasn't successful. So we really tried to capture the views of people trying to volunteer who had volunteered and who no longer volunteering. So as many of you know, because many of you um, helped to disseminate this and thank you for that, we had an eight minute survey um, in terms of the number of uh, volunteers and um, those trying to volunteer, there were over 600 responses, which was great. We had in the field for a few weeks. And you'll notice in the report that we have, there are um, light green marks or light rose marks indicating whether there's uh, an increase or a decrease um, in the results relative to different age groups or, or, or categories. So um, with that, I'll give a few highlights. Uh, first of all, as we all know, um, in all ways, volunteering has declined um, since the beginning of um, the pandemic. Um, that is for a variety of reasons, and we'll, we'll look at those later. Um, the motivations for people um, wanting uh, to, to volunteer uh, was to support their community, wanting to use their skills and experience, having time available to, vo to volunteer now. And um, these were the common inspirations. And you can, again, read more about this. Uh, what helped people um, be in a position to volunteer was um, yeah, or find their volunteer opportunities, um, Google searching, Volunteer Canada's website, the uh, websites of local volunteer centers, um, and just directly contacting organizations. People um, felt what helped them to volunteer was comfort uh, with access to technology, having time, um, and having the ability to volunteer. So, um, when we look at things that uh, created barriers for people or were the factors in people having to step back from volunteering, uh, people over the age of 65 or living with someone over the age of 65, those with health issues or living with someone with health issues, um, these were things that um, were um, causes for people to have to step back. But in addition to that, some people did not know how to find um, a volunteer opportunity, um, and, and these were challenges for some people. The most co common challenges to volunteering um, and session um, with volunteer activities, um, these changes, again, were, were caused by people's personal circumstances and um, those that they live with and some of the other barriers mentioned. Um, large majority expressed confidence in the decisions that organizations made in terms of canceling, postponing, or suspending programs. Um, and that was important to see. And um, most volunteers who are unable to volunteer say that they will um, try to uh, reconnect with the organization again, um, as long as they're comfortable with the precautions and the safety measures in place. So that was also good to see, although there are certainly um, a small number of folks who aren't able to do that. Um, you see the majority of volunteers who are volunteering currently um, felt that they were well prepared for their volunteer role. Um, and some felt that they were, in addition to that, well prepared for the safety measures and the majority say that they had the appropriate technology at home. Again, you saw earlier that the barriers for some were not, not having, um, having the technology or the comfort. Um, when asked if their opinion of the organization or the neighborhood that they volunteered with um, changed based on how they managed the impacts of COVID, you can see that most volunteers say that their opinion has either not changed um, or improved while those non-active uh, volunteers had mixed opinions. Some say that it has, um, it has changed and some say that it has not. And there were a few that um, had some difficulties. And at that, this point, I'll turn it over to Deb. Uh, Deborah Pike, our manager of special projects and 
our COVID response manager. Thanks, Paula. So we thought, again, reminding folks that the full survey reports um, and results will be shared in a webinar on July 7th. Um, we put this survey into the field at uh, the end of May and asked for respondents from volunteers and from organizations. So both of those um, survey results will, will come out in, in more fulsome fashion on July the 7th. For today, we wanted to highlight a few of the interesting pieces related to volunteers. We had over 600 responses, as Paula said, and we worked with the Volunteer Management Professionals of Canada to develop the survey that went out into the field. And we thank everyone who circulated or completed the survey um, to give us some of this interesting data. So just in terms of the profile of the folks who responded to um, the survey, not surprisingly and consistent with much, 23% uh, were male, 73% were female. In the age categories, we had 14% who responded who were between the ages of 15 to 24, 48% between the ages of 35 to 64, and 24% were over the age of 65. And those will um, factor into some of their responses as we move along with some of the highlights. We were very pleased. We had 80% um, who responded who were active volunteers prior to COVID, but interestingly, 20% who had not been active in volunteering prior to COVID-19. Among the active volunteers, 21% uh, said they continued to volunteer in the same role with the same organization. Not surprisingly, 31% said they were not able to volunteer during this time. And I think that's a number that's consistent that we've seen in, in other surveys. And anecdotally, we would know that from organizations. Again, remembering this is from the volunteers perspective. 16% uh, said they were volunteering in a new or adapted role with the same organization. This would make sense. We know from organizations that part of the pivoting that they've had to do is to adapt some of their roles to a remote uh, delivery system. Um, in, yes, and adapt to new roles within that organization. Um, some active volunteers uh, were not able to participate. They weren't able to find, if their volunteer role had ceased, they were not able to find a position uh, during COVID-19. And out of this active group, 5% said they were helping out in their neighborhood. With the folks who were not active prior to COVID-19, 28% um, had said they had volunteered at some time in the past and they were unsuccessful to finding a position at this time during COVID-19 and about the same had volunteered in the past and, and were volunteering or are volunteering now during COVID-19. 16% said they were volunteering for the very first time because of COVID-19. And I think that's an interesting um, and encouraging statistic to see. 24% uh, tried unsuccessfully to volunteer for, the, for COVID, during the COVID for the very first time. So they had not volunteered before. And we knew that this, was, this is consistent with what we're hearing from some organizations about the generosity of Canadians wanting to uh, give their time and the uh, that didn't match up exactly with the number of volunteer roles and positions that are available within organizations during this time. Go to the next slide for me, please. So we wanted to ask um, what changes the pandemic had uh, made to individuals volunteering. And those, what, it, what did their volunteering look like pre-March and then again during COVID-19? So you can see for among those who were active volunteers, 74% um, pre-COVID, that number dropped to 34% during COVID-19. And I don't think that's a surprise to anybody to see. Um, the one that did say, stay consistent, though all the others declined, was volunteering in and helping out in neighborhoods, which stayed pretty consistent at 25 and 22% across the board, all of the other types of volunteering declined. And you saw a big increase in the number of individuals who were not volunteering. The change for them, having been an active volunteer and moving to not volunteering at all was 43%. 
to the next one, please. Canadians were very uh, generous in wanting to help out and continue to be. And so we wanted to hear from them what inspired them to volunteer during COVID-19. It's not a surprise, I don't think, to anyone to hear, and we heard it um, from Paula's reference earlier, that uh, individuals wanted to support their communities, especially knowing that there were many in their communities who were not able to do so during this time. 60% of um, individuals who responded said that was their main motivation and inspiration for wanting to volunteer during COVID-19, whether they were successful in finding a, a role or not. Almost the same number wanted to use their skills and experience during this time and um, because of the particular <laughs> circumstance that we find ourselves in of um, many of us working from home, 57% uh, said they had more time available to volunteer now. Next one. Great. Even though folks were wanting to help out in, and volunteer in communities, we know that there are circumstances that would affect their ability to volunteer, some in uh, ways that would support them to be able to volunteer and other factors that would inhibit them from volunteering. And we took a look at what some of those would be. On the factors that help side, technology was a big one. If folks had access to technology and were comfortable using technology, they felt that that was a strong help for them to be able to volunteer during this time. And again, reinforcing the fact that they did have more time to be able to devote to volunteering where they did not have that same time available to them prior to the pandemic. On the flip side, um, the, the data will reinforce the age of volunteers and their health issues being a main factor that would deter individuals from continuing to volunteer or offering to volunteer during this time. Fully 31% of respondents said that they were over, 80, over age 65 and had health issues that would um, deter, deter them from volunteering or and they were living with someone over age 50, 65 who then that person having health issues would also be a main factor. Um, for organizations and for all of us to consider a strong uh, deterrent was that folks did not know where to find COVID-19 volunteering opportunities. And I know that um, for us on our site, we've done our best to um, have a special place to put COVID-19 and virtual volunteering opportunities. And I know that centers and organizations have been working hard over the last three months to do the same. So um, I'm sure that it is easier now for folks to know where to go to look for those opportunities, but still at 17% not knowing where to find volunteering opportunities. For active volunteers, almost all said that their volunteering had changed during COVID-19. And again, these top two would reinforce what we've been hearing consistently in the field. 40% said that they have stopped volunteering completely and 20% of those volunteering are now doing that remotely. Only 6% said that there was no change in their volunteering during COVID-19. So we know that some volunteers have had to step away from volunteering, that large number, and we were interested in hearing whether they were planning to return to the organization where they volunteered pre-March uh, 2020, and overwhelmingly, 84% um, said yes, they, would, they were planning to go back to volunteering, either without any reservations or as long as they were comfortable that health and safety practices were in place to allow them to do so. Remembering this is from the volunteers perspective. So we know that they are wanting to go back. That's across all age ranges. Um, among the 16% who said they were unsure or would not be going back, some of the responses that we heard related to individual health um, issues and concerns, other commitments, um, some were concerned about health and safety practices for the specific role that they had prior to March 20th and, and whether they would be comfortable going back into that role. Thank you, Paul, Deb. The last slide for you. 
There we go. Thank you so much, Deb. And I'm sure there's lots of questions. And again, as Deb mentioned, we're going to be having um, the webinar on July 7th to go into this in more detail. But one of the things that was concerning many of us is what happens to people who are unsuccessful in um, finding a volunteer opportunity when they've when they've tried. And so you see here um, what happened to those who said that they were unsuccessful in finding um, a volunteer opportunity, what happened? So 56% of those folks who were unsuccessful said, I submitted my application, but did not hear back. Others said, I did not meet the criteria. You see that um, the role uh, I applied for was full, or I had issues submitting my application online. So th those are the things that um, created um, that circumstance for people not to be successful. Um, next column deals with what did you do? So um, again, 50% said I plan to check back after, uh, after with the organization or I applied to uh, volunteer with a different organization. 28% um, though said I stopped applying for volunteer opportunities. 24% said I helped out neighbors or friends. And 11% said I joined an informal group and, and so on. So you could see that this is what happened. This is what folks did. And then the last column deals with how did it make you feel? So a, a full third said, I understand and plan to try again, which is great. 20% um, though said, I wondered if there was really a need. 19% uh, said, I felt my help was not needed. 15% um, said, I felt my skills did not match with the organization's need. And 7% said, I was discouraged and will not try volunteering again. So those are some of the things that we heard from those folks who said that they were unsuccessful in uh, finding a volunteer opportunity uh, during COVID. And so again, lessons learned for us to, and many of us thinking about what can we do from this point on and what will we do in the future. So um, now we uh, come to more questions and answers. I want to again Thank, uh, thank Deb for uh, that, uh, that presentation and for working with Ipsos on this survey and thank Patrick and your team for the, um, the, uh, the COVID um, from the 2018 uh, General Social Survey of Giving, Volunteering and Participating and open it up for comments and questions. Vous pouvez poser vos questions en anglais ou en français um, in the chat function or function de chat. Thanks, Paula. I'm going to go back uh, just for a couple of questions for um, Patrick first. Um, one of the questions related to the, the data tables that will be coming out and wondering how deep those uh, the regional data will go. Is it just at the national level? Will we see some provincial and regional data? And will there be any possibility of city or town data? Okay. Um, the tables that were we're working on right now um, are uh, showcasing uh, provincial level data. Um, we historically do not um, disseminate uh, city level, uh, but it has been requested in the past. Um, remember, this is a survey, it's not a census, uh, so there are sampling issues. Then the minute you dig down, you also very rapidly are confronted with a lot of statistical variability, meaning uh, in short that the number you have for a certain uh, city uh, is, 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 is very volatile. Um, but having said that, uh, we have in the past um, shared with, with Volunteer Canada uh, an Excel sheet with uh, volunteering rates uh, at the CMA level. And the ones that are actually uh, of some good quality are of course the larger cities. So for Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, and others that, that meet a certain uh, uh, density in population, uh, it is possible to have fairly good quality. So to answer your question, no, not in August. It is not part of our generic package. But yes, um, we will, uh, as, as we did uh, with the past uh, iterations, share with Volunteer Canada or, or to whomever, whomever wants to, to have a copy of this, you contact us in August and we will be able to share that Excel file um, showing uh, the estimates, but accompanied 
with the data warnings for each uh, CMA uh, or region. Thank you. Um, another question, Patrick, for you. Um, one of the participants is curious why COVID-19 is part of this um, presentation and your resource when the data and how that relates to the data being pre-COVID. Yes, um, it's an excellent question that we've asked ourselves a few weeks ago. Um, you know, at StatCan, um, the increasing demand uh, all directions, all domains, economic, social, health, uh, the demand for COVID-related data uh, increased significantly. And obviously, uh, not only at the economic level, but on every uh, level of society, uh, there were some, some impacts. So um, at the agency level, uh, there was a, 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 an exercise to identify uh, from far or from close, if it was possible to share with the public as quickly as possible um, a, 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 a lens on COVID with, with the topic of uh, all, all the topics that are covered uh, at StatCan. And of course, uh, volunteering and giving um, was a candidate. And it, it, it was a, a challenge to, to present this article given the fact that is, it is pre-pandemic. Uh, nevertheless, um, the, the, the extreme value here of, of this, this uh, file will be once we have a post-COVID measure. Um, but meanwhile, I think it is obvious that there is some insight that is possible or certain perspective um, to, to, to um, extract from, from the data. Thank you. I'm going to take a question on the Volunteer Canada information. Were volunteers able to self-identify whether they held multiple volunteer placements or, and differentiate between placements that were continued or were suspended? Um, in, we will have a bit more information on that because we did ask that type of breakout question. It's not included here in the um, highlight uh, questions today, but uh, we, we will have more details on that on July 7th in the broader, more inclusive data that we share. Um, another question says that it looks like overall a lot of volunteers had to step back and that overall volunteer pool will re was reduced, but a lot of organizations have been overwhelmed with applications and an increased interest in volunteering. How do these two pieces connect? Um, I think we are going to see some more information. You're absolutely right. This is an issue and one of the reasons that we wanted to survey volunteers and organizations. So this was one of the issues that we raised in the survey for organizations. So I expect that we will be able to look at both of those pieces together. Um, again, referring you to our webinar on July 7th, if that's okay. Um, only 16% of volunteers who said they wouldn't return or weren't sure if they would, do we have a sense of the demographic of those volunteers? Um, I will have that information by July 7th in terms of the breakdown overall. It, I was told that the number looks like it's mostly under 65, um, but I will have the specific breakdown for you on July 7th because you're right, um, it will, that breakdown will be important in knowing what that implication is for organizations when they're looking at the risk of volunteers not coming back. It may be smaller than we think depending on what the age bracket and whether those volunteers were active before. So watch for more on that on July 7th. Um, Paula, how do you see the Government of Canada's new student program that is offering money in exchange for volunteer hours impacting the volunteer, the volunteer sector and volunteer motivation in the future? Volunteer Canada is not involved in that program, so I think it's best to um, to get a sense from those uh, directly involved. Um, Volunteer Canada's focus this summer is continuing with our work on responding 
um, to COVID, um, helping organizations better engage and have the resources they need now that we're all considering um, reopening or uh, re-engaging folks. So issues such as volunteering safely, um, transitioning to more virtual volunteering opportunities. The other things we're focusing on, we've just started a new project with Canada Life uh, that's looking at the role of volunteering in promoting social inclusion, diversity and equity. And that's something of course that's uh, very important. It's been important for many, many decades, but it's been highlighted recently with um, very, very serious concerns about systemic racism. So we're focusing on that this summer um, and into the fall um, on, on, on both those things. Thank you. Um, a question from another participant. As we re-engage volunteers in our organization, safety and risk assessment plus retraining are top priorities. Is there a plan to evaluate and collect data on how we were, are doing in a few more months time? i.e. is more research on lessons learned and how we are doing as we slowly re-engage. Um, thank you so much for the question. Yes, uh, we are planning to uh, evaluate this survey, figure out to look at what we can learn from the results of this survey and uh, put another survey into the field in the fall, looking at many of those questions that you are posing. Uh, know that for the organizations, we did ask them to take a look at what they anticipated their challenges to be over the next coming months. So that will help us inform the questions uh, that go into a survey that will go out in the fall. So you can watch for that and we will promote that and let folks know once we have the timing finalized for that. Uh, a lot of people are asking about registering for the July 7th webinar. Uh, Karen, I think, is posting the link. Watch to our website for that. There is a link. Um, oh, sorry, she's saying that it's going to be sent to later today and available on our website. So if you check back on our website, you'll be able to find the information <clears throat> and registration details for Tuesday, July 7th for that webinar. Fantastic. I wanted to take a few minutes just to um, draw some highlights and respond to what we've learned today. Um, and then of course, in terms of questions, Volunteer Canada is definitely available. Um, contact us through info at volunteer.ca um, and we're happy to answer or find the answers to some of the questions you may have. We're also really looking forward to hearing um, your processing and sense making of the data and, and most importantly, what are we going to do about it? So. Um, it was really great and again, congratulations to StatsCan for providing us with this baseline data that does um, really give us some insights into our current situation, particularly when we see the huge number of folks involved in informal volunteering. We've seen that a lot. Um, as we've um, carried out our response through formal volunteering and organizations, but lots of generosity. And I think that as a sector and as a society, we need to understand that better, support and promote it better. And also um, think about how um, those in um, structured volunteer programs and organizations, what is the interplay between that and all the folks who are involved in more for informal and organic movements? Uh, we also heard a lot about the different generations and of course um, with the large number of older adults being taught volunteers during the pandemic those same folks having to step away what are the implications where are they volunteering um, and how do we support those subsectors that have um, gaps when this happens um, the other thing that was great which i always want to highlight is that uh, younger Canadians have always had the highest volunteer rate, both informal and formal we're seeing now. So the uh, I generation um, having this um, enormous uh, expression of generosity, um, a desire to make the world better, um, to contribute and to um, give not just time, but their, um, you know, put into place their values in a variety of ways is something that gives us all um, a lot of inspiration. And um, anyone who questions whether or not um, younger Canadians are interested in helping others are, and are interested in our community, um, that is something I always take the time to point out that they have the highest volunteer rate, formal, informal, and are making a huge difference when it comes to raising awareness about important issues as we've seen over the last several months. Um, in terms of the barriers that uh, were revealed in the 
um, highlights that Deb had uh, provided. What, what are uh, things that deter people from volunteering? Um, what were some challenges and what were the things that made it possible for people? Those are things that I think we can all um, develop some strategies to deal with. Uh, how do we make uh, volunteer opportunities more accessible and more well known for those who weren't sure where to find them? How do we also make sure that the digital divide doesn't prevent people from volunteering if they don't have access to technology or they are not comfortable with technology? Um, and how do we um, manage the um, disconnect between those that are feeling vulnerable and therefore staying um, staying away from volunteering and the concern that many of the sec in the sector have raised that now people who were actively connected to community and active contributors are now themselves more vulnerable in terms of being socially isolated and feeling disconnected and what is our responsibility as organizations to address um, those folks who have been huge contributors to our community um, in many cases, all of their lives. So, so those are some of the things that I know many of us are, um, are thinking about. Uh, we'll have more opportunities over the summer to hear, uh, to, to learn more about the data and, um, and what else is happening in terms of where people are volunteering, why they are, uh, what the benefits they uh, report um, to, to achieve from that and all the other, um, uh, other factors that we'll learn from the great data that is in the general social survey of giving, volunteering and participating and in the, the great uh, uh, data that was collected by, you know, about volunteers and organizations on this recent study that we did uh, with, with Ipsos. So I want to um, end by again congratulating and thanking St Statistics Canada. That was well-timed and great. I also want to thank Ipsos for their partnership with us on the research, the support of Employment and Social Development Canada on that research and on developing um, ways of disseminating the uh, giving and volunteering stats. Our partners, the Volunteer Management Professionals of Canada um, that do a lot of work with us and, and, and have partnered with us on this work, on this survey, and to thank um, colleagues uh, on the Volunteer Canada team, Karen Dietrich, Alison Oshesky and uh, Deb Pike for all the work uh, leading up to this webinar and um, all the work um, leading up to our better understanding of how do we manage and what is the volunteering lens of the pandemic. So with that, uh, I will say thank you all. Merci à tous. Uh, thank you for joining us. We look forward to your continued questions, reflections, and to the challenge of us now figuring out with all this information, what do we do about it? And we'll figure that out together. Thank you and merci.